So I've been using a Fitbit ever since my original Apple Watch broke on me back in 2020. So I started with the Fitbit Charge 4 and then last summer I picked up the Fitbit Charge 5. And though I've enjoyed using these Fitbits, three years later, I thought it'd be a great chance to give an Apple Watch a second chance. So I got this used Apple Watch SE first generation for $100 and I've had it for six months. And so today I'm gonna share with you my experience of switching from the Fitbit to the Apple Watch and if you should consider doing the same thing. So let's talk tech. I'm Agent with Art and Lead Tech. We believe tech was made to make our lives easier, so we're here to help you understand and discover new tech that improves your life. But one thing I wanna make sure that we start with that even though I use them very similarly, they are very different devices. The Fitbit is not a smartwatch, it's a fitness tracker. And the Apple Watch is a smartwatch with fitness tracking capabilities. And to note, I am an Apple user. I have an iPhone. I don't have an Android phone. And like I shared in the beginning, I'm gonna be sharing my experience. So this is how I use my Fitbit, how I use my Apple Watch, and how they compare. So take it with a grain of salt. You might use your Apple Watch a little bit differently, but this is just my experience. And that said, there's a lot of pros and cons of using both of these devices, but there's also a lot of similarities. So let's start with that. So sleep tracking, this is something I really loved using on the Fitbit. My original Apple Watch didn't have the lengthy battery life, so I couldn't use it at night. I mean, still can't use this at night all the time because some nights the battery, I forget to charge the battery before I go to bed. And so then I have to put it on the charger and I can't wear it to sleep. That said, if I'm looking at it at the times where I do get to wear it at night and I'm charging at the right times, the Apple Watch and the Fitbit kind of are very similar. When you look at your analytics of your sleep, they'll tell you how long you were asleep, what stages of sleep you were in, whether you were in REM sleep, light sleep, or deep sleep, or wherever else. And then kind of give you a general summary of how restful that night of sleep was. But the one slight advantage that I really enjoyed from the Fitbit side of sleep tracking is that they give you a score. The next morning, the Fitbit app will calculate your sleep schedule and how much you slept and the stages of sleep you were in and give you an overall score. So it's pretty easy to read and pretty easy to understand. And this is with the free version of the Fitbit app. No premium. I, I tried premium for a little bit for like a try over era, but I really didn't feel like I got more out of that. My comparison when it comes to all the app stuff from the Fitbit versus the Apple Watch is compared to the free version of the Fitbit app. Overall though, I'm gonna give a slight edge to the Fitbit side of things, despite the fact that Apple's is almost just as good. It's just, I have to make sure that my Apple Watch is charged daily to make sure I can wear it tonight to sleep, to see my sleep results that next morning. Whereas the Fitbit on one charge, I can get at least three to four nights of sleep before I have to charge it again. Now moving on to the next thing, which I think is the most important is exercise tracking. Now both of them have great ways to motivate you and to encourage you to move and move more. For Fitbit, it's zone minutes. Fitbit will reward your zone minutes depending on how, how your heart rate is during your workout. The more you move, the higher your heart rate, and the higher your heart rate, the more point zone minutes you are rewarded. And for Apple, it's those closing of those rings. Honestly, both are great. I do prefer and enjoy the ring closing because it's just so simple, and it's a great, easy visual to look at to see, oh, I've moved a lot today. I got my exercising done. I've met my calorie goals. It's such an easy way to glance at your watch and be motivated to either move or to feel accomplished. And then another advantage I think the Apple Watch has over the Fitbit is, is the fact that they have a ton more workouts to choose from when it comes that's preloaded on your watch. The Fitbit has the ability to load, I think five pre uh, workouts that you can select from the app and load onto your watch. The Fitbit also has this auto sensing exercise functionality that if you start playing basketball and you don't start a watch, it will say, hey, you're playing, it seems like you're playing basketball right now. Let me start an exercise, which is cool, but it just doesn't feel as consistent in my time of using it. And I remember having issues adding basketball to those preloaded uh, workouts. It's like certain exercises are only available through those auto sensing functionality, which again is somewhat unreliable, at least in my experience. So for me, I have really enjoyed this switch to the Apple Watch in that sense. As for heart rate monitoring, they both will track your heart rate. The Fitbit will do a continuous heart rate tracking. So if you're not doing any exercising, it will still track your heart rate. Your Apple Watch will do it periodically. It won't do it continuously like the Fitbit will. But if you're working out with the Apple Watch, it's obviously going to continue to check your heart rate because it has to for the exercise and the ring closing and all that stuff. And in my use, there wasn't really an advantage. I wasn't really checking my heart rate all the time, but if that really matters to you, then maybe go look at the Fitbit. Otherwise, I, I just don't think it's that 
big of a deal. You can use both of these for alarms. They both vibrate. The advantage that the Apple Watch has is that you can actually have a sound play through your Apple Watch for your alarm as well to help encourage the vibration. Because in my usage, it's really easy to get used to the vibrating and like it will work at first and then suddenly over and over time you'll get numb to the vibrating alarm and it won't wake you up as effectively if it's just a vibrating but the sound does help you can also tap to pay you can put a card and program a car uh, your credit card debit card on your uh, fitbit and you can all obviously do that with apple pay on your apple watch i don't do either with my apple watch if i'm going to do tap to pay it's usually just my iphone that said if you care you can do that but the apple watch is a bit more seamless because you have to double tap a button where on the fitbit you have to put in a whole code as for customization they both can customize the watch face and the clock face whatever you want to call it but for the fitbits you can't preload a few screens you have to only choose one which is a slight inconvenience not a big deal if you get tired of a watch on your apple watch you can just swipe to the left or to the right, and it will be changed. But on the Fitbit, you have to go to the app to find a new one that you might like. So for me, switching back to the Apple Watch was really enjoyable because I could do that. Obviously, you still have to go to the app to preload those, but at least once they're preloaded, you don't have to continuously go back to the app. You also have GPS on both of these. I would say that the Fitbit's not really that consistent. It relies heavily on the phone that it's connected to. But that said, it can get a little wonky where it's like when you look back at your walk or your run, you'll see a lot of zigzagging. And I've heard a lot of issues with the GPS on other people's reviews. So if, you look a bit, if you're looking for a bit more accuracy, I think the Apple Watch would be the way to go. And as for notifications, you can get them both on your Apple Watch and your Fitbit. If you have an Android and you have the Fitbit, you can do quick replies to those notifications, those text messages you might get. But if for Apple users, and if you have a Fitbit, you're not able to, you're just able to see the notifications. And obviously you can't take calls on here. But with the Apple Watch, I'm able to reply to those notifications via text or whatever, or take a phone call if I need to. So, And so that's something I realized how much I missed when I switched to the Fitbit and back to the Apple Watch. I took it for granted when I first had it. And so I'm really glad to have it back. Now, despite them having similarities and one shining and others, there are some things that are actually really different between the two. Starting off with the weight and screen size of these things. So I have the 44 millimeter Apple Watch SE first generation and I have the Fitbit Charge 5. Both of these are completely different to one another. The Fitbit Charge 5 was really lightweight and the screen was tiny. It just felt like a, a wristband on your wrist. It didn't feel like it was really there. Immediately, so much lighter than the Apple Watch. That said, when I put the Apple Watch back on, I noticed how heavy it was, but eventually I got used to it and I really noticed it's there too, especially switching to these elastic bands. I'm really bothered by the weight of this Apple Watch anymore. So, so yes, the Apple Watch is heavier and bigger, but I really do enjoy that larger screen and I've gotten used to that heavy weight. As for battery life, the Fitbit Charge 5 takes the cake there. You can go up to almost seven days if you're not using it to walk, to track your GPS or work out if you're just wearing it. If you start doing any of that, it drops down more and more. If you put on always on display, it drops even to like two days, but still longer than the Apple Watch SE on its own. And this watch doesn't even have always on capabilities. It'll usually last me just a little bit over a day, maybe 30 hours, depending on if I work out or not. But that said, I'm used to just charging it now. Another thing that's very different, but similar at the same time, is that the Fitbit app has everything that you need, all your data on one app. But for the Apple Watch, it's kind of in two. For customization and settings, it's in the Watch app, but for all the health tracking situations, it's in the Health app. I would love to see a combination app where it's all in one. It's a small difference, but a, at least a more noticeable difference than I expected it to be. And speaking of apps, third-party apps in general, the Fitbit, you don't have third-party apps. Where Apple and the Apple Watch and the App Store, there's a ton of different apps, either free or that you have to pay a couple dollars for to be able to expand the capabilities of your Apple Watch. So there's apps for customization, there's apps for sleep tracking, for exercise, for running, for all these different things. And that's something I really enjoyed switching back to the Apple Watch, having these different third-party apps because some of those apps offer a bit more detail and a bit more clarity when it comes to your sleep tracking, your exercise, or help you be motivated in different ways. And some even just are entertainment too, which is really cool. 
So overall, the Switch has had its ups and downs. I'm surprised that the Fitbit actually had some things that it did better than the Apple Watch. But the Apple Watch, I think it's a device that you don't realize how good it is unless you try it yourself. That said, I'm really enjoying having an Apple Watch again. I just wish it was a little bit lighter and maybe had a longer battery life like the Fitbits did. But having the ability to respond to text messages, take calls, and have these smarter functionalities is really clutch. So anyone on the fence about a Fitbit and Apple Watch, obviously find one that fits your budget and fits your needs. But if you have an iPhone, I would say highly consider the Apple Watch. The connectivity between the devices of the iPhone and the Apple Watch is just so seamless and, and so worth it in my opinion. And you don't have to break the bank either if you wanna try an Apple Watch. Like I said, I got this for $100 used on Facebook Marketplace. But before you buy a used, watch this video because you can get scammed pretty easily buying Apple Watches. So watch this video before you do that. But if you wanna see fuller reviews on the Fitbit Charge 5 or the latest Series 8 Apple Watch, check out those videos right here in this playlist. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.